The rise of Ibrahim Trora. Is he the next target of world powers? Unveiling a global conspiracy against African revolutionist leaders. Throughout history, Africa has witnessed the tragic assassinations of numerous leaders who dare to challenge the status quo and advocate for the independence, sovereignty, and prosperity of their nations. These leaders, driven by a desire for self-determination and the pursuit of justice, found themselves targeted by world powers that sought to maintain or expand their influence on the continent. In this video, we delve into the plot against African leaders by world powers, reflecting on their unwavering commitment to their people and the lasting impact of their untimely deaths. Africa is the major producer of important metals and minerals such as uranium used to produce nuclear energy, platinum used for jewelry and industrial applications, nickel use in producing stainless steel, magnets, coins and rechargeable batteries, bauxite, cobalt, just to name a few. The two most profitable minerals are gold and diamond, producing about 483 tons in 2008, making 22% of the world's total production. South Africa accounting for almost half the produce, then Ghana, Guinea, Mali, and Tanzania being the other major producers. In the same year, 2008, 55% of world's diamond came from Africa, Botswana, Angola, South Africa, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Namibia being the largest producers. Backward to 2007, 12.5% of world's total oil production and 6.45% of total natural gas production came from African. Nigeria, Libya, Algeria, Egypt, and Angola dominates Africa oil industry. This has led to conflicts as in Nigeria, guerrilla groups attacking oil infrastructure and stealing oil from pipelines since 1990. Reason being that foreign oil companies have exploited their labor while keeping most of the wealth. Now, with all these wealth bringing resources in Africa, Western leaders have had no reason to give up on Africa and leave behind all the resources. In that light, they'll stop at nothing to avoid anyone from taking them out of the way. We'll be throwing a little light on a few African leaders who sacrificed their lives, and some being at risk, trying to make a better Africa. Behind the scenes, a plot has been brewing, targeting African leaders who dare to challenge the status quo and pursue the progress and prosperity of their nations. Yet, amidst the shadows and subterfuge, New African leaders like Ibrahim Traoré stand tall, resolute in their commitment to their nations and their people. To have a better understanding of this conspiracy, let's travel back in time and take a look at some African leaders that were victims of the global conspiracy by world powers. Thomas Sankara The assassination of Thomas Sankara, the charismatic leader of Burkina Faso, remains a deep tragic and controversial event in African history. On October 15, 1987, Sankara's promising journey was abruptly cut short in a violent coup d'etat that shook the nation and reverberated across the continent. Thomas Sankara's vision was promoting the well-being of the poorest people in the country by eliminating corruption and dominance of former French colonial power, fighting for equality. As sign of this rebirth, he changed the country's name from Upper Volta Republic to Burkina Faso meaning Hand of Incorruptible People, with its people called Burkina Bay meaning Upright People. While concrete evidence directly implicating specific world leaders are evident, there are claims and suspicions that suggest their indirect influence or support in the events leading to Sankara's death. During his presidency, Sankara's revolutionary ideas and policies posed a threat to the interests of certain world leaders. His strong opposition to neocolonialism, his calls for African self-determination, and his efforts to challenge the prevailing global economic order were seen as disruptive to established power structures and interests. Some argue that Sankara's assassination was a result of covered actions orchestrated by powerful world leaders who feared the influence of his ideology and the potential for its spread beyond Burkina Faso's borders. It is suggested that these leaders, 
either directly or through their intelligence agencies, supported or influenced elements within Burkina Faso who sought to remove Sankara from power. The assassination of Thomas Sankara robbed Burkina Faso and Africa of a charismatic and visionary leader. His death sparked outrage among his supporters, both within the country and internationally, leading to a legacy of admiration and a quest for justice. Sankara's ideas and ideals continue to inspire activists, scholars, and ordinary citizens who strive for social, economic, and political transformation. The legacy of Thomas Sankara and the circumstances surrounding his assassination continue to fuel discussions, research, and calls for truth and justice. The quest for transparency and accountability in understanding the events leading to his death remains crucial, not only to honor Sankara's memory, but also to shed light on the dynamics of power and influence that shape Africa's political landscape. Patras Umumba. The assassination of Patrice Umumba, one of Africa's most iconic and influential leaders, has long been associated with the involvement of world powers. Lumumba's tragic death on January 17, 1961, marked a dark chapter in the struggle for independence and self-determination in the Democratic Republic of Congo, formerly known as the Republic of Congo. Lumumba's rise to power as the first democratically elected Prime Minister of Congo in 1960 posed a threat to the interests of both domestic and international actors. His vision of a united and independent Congo, free from colonial exploitation, challenged the status quo and sought to assert Congolese sovereignty over the nation's vast natural resources. It is widely believed that Lumumba's assassination was the result of a conspiracy involving various world powers. The United States, Belgium, and other Western nations were allegedly involved in covert operations to undermine Lumumba's government and remove him from power. Their motivations were driven by concerns of the potential loss of control and influence in a resource-rich region. His tragic death serves as a somber reminder of the lengths to which world powers were willing to go to protect their interests at the expense of African self-determination. In recent years, efforts have been made to uncover the truth about Lumumba's assassination and to seek justice for the crimes committed against him. The legacy of Lumumba endures as a symbol of resistance and the ongoing struggle for justice reminding the world of the need to confront the dark history of foreign interference in African affairs and to safeguard the principles of sovereignty and self-determination. Muammar Gaddafi The assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, the longtime leader of Libya, remains a subject of controversy and speculation regarding the involvement of world powers. Gaddafi's death on October 20, 2011, marked the end of his four-decade rule and the culmination of the Libyan civil war, which erupted earlier that year. The circumstances surrounding Gaddafi's death are disputed, but it is widely acknowledged that his demise was the result of a NATO-backed military intervention in Libya. The intervention was initially framed as a humanitarian mission to protect civilians, but it quickly evolved into a military campaign to remove Gaddafi from power. While NATO's official mandate was to enforce a no-fly zone and protect civilians, there are claims and allegations that suggest some Western powers went beyond that scope and actively supported armed rebel groups seeking Gaddafi's ouster. It is argued that these world powers provided military assistance, intelligence, and even airstrikes that ultimately led to Gaddafi's downfall. The events that unfolded in the final days of Gaddafi's rule were chaotic and violent. After being captured by rebel forces, Gaddafi was reportedly subjected to brutal treatment and ultimately killed. Graphic videos and images of his capture and subsequent death circulated widely, raising concerns about human rights violations and the manner in which he was handled. The complex dynamics of global politics and the interests of different world powers in the region have contributed to ongoing speculation about their involvement in his demise. His death and the subsequent power vacuum unleashed a wave of instability and violence that continues to impact Libya and the broader region. 
The legacy of Gaddafi's assassination serves as a reminder of the complex dynamics of international politics. The often blurry lines between humanitarian intervention and regime change, and the responsibility of world powers in the aftermath of such interventions. The quest for truth, justice, and stability in Libya remains an ongoing challenge, as the nation grapples with the consequences of Gaddafi's demise and the subsequent struggles for power and control. Captain Ibrahim Trore Will Ibrahim Trore survive the global conspiracy against African leaders? We can't possibly list all these great leaders and not mention Captain Ibrahim Trore, which is safe to call him Thomas Sankara's incarnate. Captain Ibrahim Trore, interim leader of Burkina Faso since September 30, 2022 coup d'etat, which ousted interim president Paul Henry Sandogo d'Amiba. Trore, who is now 34, is currently the youngest serving president in the world. He went into office on October 6, 2022, as interim president of Burkina Faso, and on September 30, 2022, as incumbent president of the Patriotic Movement for Safeguard and Restoration. Having rank as a captain in the Cobra Special Forces Unit, he fought wars and battles like Mali War, Islamic Insurgency, Burkina Bay coup d'etat in January 2022, shortly after staging a coup against Damiba's administration in September 2022, Trore acknowledged that his age would be a subject of discussion among those questioning his presidential credentials. Damiba, who was 41 by then, had been ousted by Trore, who was seven years his junior, as they rightly say age is just a number, and two positions lower than him in the military chain of command. He stated, I know that I am younger than most of you here. We did not want what happened, but we did not have a choice, he told government officials in October 2022. Whereas many people described Trore's rise as meteoric, within the military circles his rise to the top was just around the corner. Ibrahim Trore studied at a local military academy and thereafter joined the army in 2009, being 21 years old at the time. He acquired artillery skills in the North African nation of Morocco. He settled on a military career after completing his secondary education in Bobo de Lasso City. After serving in relatively junior positions in Burkina Faso's military, Ibrahim Trore's major stride came in 2014 when he was deployed to Mali as a soldier under the United Nations Peacekeeping Mission Program, my NUSMA. Soldiers within Burkina Faso's military told the country's Radio Omega in the past that Trore, during his deployment to Mali, showed bravery. Age 26 at the time, Ibrahim Trore overcame a complex attack by militant extremists in the northern Timbuktu region an unnamed source told Radio Omega. The same source further said that Trore, who was a lieutenant at the time, exhibited leadership attributes including being willful, courageous, and close to his men. Besides the assignment in Mali, Ibrahim Trore also featured prominently in the fights against insurgency in his native Burkina Faso between 2019 and 2022. He was promoted to the rank of captain in 2020. Safe to say he was on his way to greatness. Fast forward to July 28, 2023. Burkina Faso interim head of state captain Ibrahim Trora delivered a powerful address at the second Russia-Africa Economic and Humanitarian Forum calling for greater sovereignty, food security, and recognition of Africa's historical contributions. Ibrahim Trora's speech at the Russia-Africa Summit, held on July 27 to July 28, 2023, earned him a lot of applause. He stated, The problem is seeing African heads of state, who bring nothing to people who are struggling, singing the same song as the imperialists who call us militia. As a result, they end up referring to us as people who do not respect human rights, Ibrahim Trori said. We, African heads of state must stop acting like marionettes who dance each time, the imperialists pull on our strings. His speech brought everyone comparing him to the legendary Burkina Bay pan-Africanist leader, Thomas Isidore Mol Sankara, 
suggesting that Ibrahim Traoré's rhetoric mirrored the fervor and dedication to African autonomy and prosperity that characterized Thomas Sankara's vision. At this point, let's go down memory lane when Thomas Sankara said, kill Sankara and a thousand of Sankaras will be born. A few things Ibrahim Traoré plans to do as to continuing Thomas Sankara's vision for Africa are 1. Prioritizing education 2. Addressing inequality 3. Improving healthcare 4. Protecting the environment in line with Sankara's belief in sustainable development, which had him combating desertification in the Sahel by planting over 10 million trees, Ibrahim intends to promote renewable energy sources, invest in eco-friendly initiatives, and encourage responsible agricultural practices to ensure a greener future for Burkina Faso. Stepping up to the Western powers have proven to be quite dangerous as seen with the other leaders who lost their lives in the process of trying to give their countries a better life and a better Africa at large. Thomas Sankara was assassinated by his right-hand man, the same man who led his coup d'etat. Can Ibrahim Traoré trust anyone by his side? Will he succeed to implement his rules for a better Africa before returning power to civilian authorities in Burkina Faso as promised come July 2024? The first coup attempt on Ibrahim Traoré. Friday, September 8, three soldiers in Burkina Faso were arrested and charged with plotting against the ruling junta, the country's military prosecutor. It is said that investigators from last month received a tip-off about soldiers and former soldiers working in intelligence who were scouting out the homes and other locations used by key figures in the junta, including Captain Ibrahim Traoré, he said in a statement. The aim of this coup was to destabilize the transition, it said, referring to a term used to describe interim military rule before promised elections. Further investigations led to the arrest of the three, who have been ordered detained by an examining magistrate. They have been charged with involvement in a military plot, plotting against state security, breach of military orders, criminal association and endangerment. Military prosecutor Major Alphonse Zorma said in the statement. The three were named as Warrant Officer Windin Maleg Kebo, Sergeant Bryce Ismail Rand, and former Corporal Sami Dar. Back in 2015, these three officers had been convicted in a plot against the state. Apparently, they'd want to remark history. According to Zorma, the three unequivocally admitted the facts. The second coup attempt on Ibrahim Trora Burkina Faso's military government said on Wednesday, 27th of September, that they had foiled a coup attempt the previous day, almost a year after the country's leader came to power in a coup himself. In a statement read out on state television, it said a proven coup attempt was foiled on September 26, 2023, by Burkina Faso's intelligence and security services. At present, officers and other alleged participants in this destabilization attempt have been arrested and others are being actively sought, the statement said. It said the alleged perpetrators had the sinister intention of attacking the institutions of the Republic and plunging the country into chaos. Late on Tuesday 27th of September, thousands of people took to the streets of the capital, Ouagadougou, following a call from Tro supporters to defend him amid rumors of a coup on social media. The military government said it would seek to shed all possible light on this plot. It said it regrets that officers whose oath is to defend their homeland have strayed into an undertaking of this nature, which aims to hinder the Burkina people's march for sovereignty and total liberation from the terrorist hordes trying to enslave them. Since Ibrahim Traor's rise as interim president, there has had a lot of change in his mind, a better future for Africa, he has a vision of prioritizing education, addressing inequality, improving healthcare. Two coup attempts on Ibrahim Traoré in just one month. The question remains, is Ibrahim Traoré the next target of Western powers? Will he survive the plot? Our questions will probably remain unanswered. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below.